Hey guys, welcome to Wangle's Workshop. My name's Cole, and on today's episode, we're gonna be finishing the batch of six knives that we started last week, last month, two months ago, almost finishing. Finishing one knife. I've been super busy. So today we're gonna take up where we left off um, in the last video. The knives are ready for heat treatment. I'm going to make the knife scale material um, and, and finish the knives out. Although I really only finished one knife just to, to be able to release this video a little sooner. It's been three weeks since my last upload. The other five are, are very close. I pretty much just have to shape the knife scales um, and sharpen the knives. And guys, if you have any projects, knife making or woodworking that you'd like to share with me, you could always go over to my Instagram and message me on there. You could send me photos of it. Um, I would love to interact with you guys and see what kind of things you guys have been working on. And if you enjoy the video, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. And if you wanna be notified when I upload new videos, please hit that notification bell. Guys. Let's start the show. These knives are made from 1084 steel, so for the heat treatment, I'm basically going to get them non-magnetic, heat them just a little bit more, and then go ahead and quench them in oil that's warmed up to, I think, around 120 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. A couple of the knives had a super mild warp towards the tip of the blade, so I'll clamp them straight to some angle iron and then put them in for a temper. 400 degrees, two cycles, two hours. Total Boat was kind enough to reach out and send me some samples of their high performance epoxy, so I'll be using that to make some of the knife scales today. I'll be using this simple press made from plywood to make some burlap micarta. This epoxy is a 2 to 1 mixture ratio. It's 2 parts resin to 1 part slow hardener and the measuring cups that Total Boat provides make it super simple to figure out the ratios. I'll also be adding some black diamond pigment powder to the epoxy to give the scales a little bit more color. Now I'm gonna saturate each piece of burlap and then stack them in the press. Once all the burlap is in place, I'll put another piece of wax paper over it and then put the top of the press on. And then I'm just gonna use a 35 pound anvil to do the pressing. With the heat treatment done, I'm gonna go ahead and sand the knives up to 320 grit, and then I will acid etch them and stone wash them. Once I finish sanding one side of the knife, I like to apply a coat of oil to it because it's high carbon steel and since sometimes I'm sanding with water, uh, the bottom side of the knife that's finished will rust while you're sanding the top side of the knife and then you have to come back and hit it again. So this helps prevent that. Once I'm done hand sanding the knives, I will clean them very well and then they will go into the ferric chloride for an edge. I don't show it here, but after you take them out of the ferric chloride, you need to bathe them in baking soda and water and scrub them off very well to neutralize the acid. 
for the stone wash, I put them in a PVC container filled with pebbles that are soaked in WD-40, and then I'll agitate it for about five to 10 minutes. To add some pop to the knife scales, I will be adding G10 liners to the burlap micarta. And again, I'll just be using total boat epoxy to do this. Now I'll cut the knife scales down to size using my bandsaw. I'm also going to cut all my pins to size and that way we can start drilling the pinholes in the knife scales. Now I'm going to trace out the knife scales and then use my bandsaw to remove the bulk of the material. And then I'm going to do something that I saw dies in every film customs do, which is use a flush trim router bit to trim them flush. It's something that I can't believe I did not think of myself. <laughs> Now I'm going to give everything a very thorough cleaning and then I will glue on the knife scales. For the glue up I'll be using West Systems G Flex Epoxy. It's considered a really good epoxy for knife making. Once the epoxy is fully cured, it's time to cut the knife pins flush and shape the knife scales. Be careful when you're doing that though because you don't want to build up too much heat on the pins as it will affect the epoxy. Once the scales are fully shaped, I'm going to go ahead and add the secondary bevel. I will start by using my belt sander with a 400 grit belt, and then I will go ahead and move over to a diamond stone and some wet stones.
For the finish of the knife, I'll be using boiled linseed oil. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Um, I had a ton of fun making all these knives. Obviously, I still have to tighten up and finish the last five and then make Kydex sheaths for all of them. The process of making six knives in a batch was um, very beneficial and I would highly recommend doing it if you have the opportunity. And I'm really looking forward to making one knife and not a batch. Like It will almost feel easy to make one compared to making six and having to do every process six times. So I look forward to seeing how fast I can make one knife now compared to prior to doing this batch of knives. And guys, I'd like to shout out a couple knife making channels that I've been watching a lot lately. There's so many great knife making channels, um, but there's a couple in particular uh, one is Red Beard Ops. He's an awesome knife making channel in general, but especially friendly to beginners. He's got excellent detailed breakdowns on heat treatments, um, stone washing, all kinds of different things like that. And he's tremendously helped me a lot. Another channel that I've been watching lately is uh, Ailey Knives. He's kind of a, a smaller channel like me, but he uploads super frequently and his channel is definitely going to blow up. But I really like his channel because he takes risks. He tries all kinds of different things, San Mai and Go Mai. Um, and he does them successfully and, and, and does a really good job of it. Um, and he always gives a detailed breakdown of the mistakes he made and where he went wrong and uh, how you could not make the same mistakes yourself. And guys, I really just want to say thank you to everyone that's helped support the channel and helped grow it to where it is so far. I would love to build the community around this channel and just around knife making and woodworking in general. I feel like the YouTube community around that is, is really awesome and I just really appreciate the positivity of everybody. And guys, if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. And if you want to be notified when I upload new videos, hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching.